In this video, I'm going to be talking about angled forces in equilibrium. In this scenario, we have a crate in the middle that's suspended with a few different ropes. So the first thing we're going to do with any type of force or dynamics problem is we're going to go ahead and draw a force diagram and any forces that are not directly horizontal or vertical, we're going to break them into two different components, an X and Y component. So what I've done is two different steps. I drew the original force diagram. The original force diagram is all of the force vectors in blue. So the actual forces are the FG, the pull straight down from the earth, FT3, FT2, and FT1. And anytime you have angled forces, um, you wanna take those forces and then break them up into an X and Y component. And you do this by basically completing a right triangle. So I typically just take the angle given to me in the problem right over here and I close it off into a right triangle and then the horizontal component is going to give me the X component of that rope and then the vertical component is going to give me the Y component of that rope. So we want to find two values. We're looking for the tension in rope number three and then we're looking for the mass of the box. So when approaching a problem like this, you want to be um, very careful and detail oriented about your setup and you want to save your numbers to the very end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my sum of forces in the X and Y direction and set up everything in variable form and I'm going to put my numbers in last. All right, so what I've done is I set up my sum of forces in the Y direction. And what I did is I made every force that is directed upwards a positive number. So my T1Y and my T2Y are my only two upward forces. So these are both positive. And then I made my FG, my only downward force, a negative. So I just put minus FG. And we know that it's equal to zero Newtons. We know that because the sum of forces equals M times A. and um, we don't know the mass at this point, we, but we do definitely know the acceleration is zero because the entire system is at rest. And then we did a similar process for the sum of forces in the X direction. And I just said that everything to the right is positive and everything to the left is negative. It doesn't really matter which direction you pick as positive or negative. You just want to make sure opposite directions have opposite signs. So my T2X is my first positive force. And then my FT3 is my second one. And then I subtracted T1X, which is my only force directed towards the left. And again, that equals zero Newtons because there's no acceleration and no movement for the entire system. So what I want to do from here on out is now that I have approached the problem conceptually, I've drawn all the forces, I've created my formulas for the forces in the Y and X direction. I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of trig, use my 40 degrees and 75 degrees. And anytime you have an angle, and one side of your triangle, you can find every other side of the triangle. So I'm confident that we can find all of these Y and X components for each of our triangles. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and then plug those numbers in and see where that leaves us.
All right, so what I did is I just took my triangles and I just pulled them over to the side. So these triangles that you see over to the side, I just pulled out this 40 degree right triangle and slid it right over here. And I was wanted to solve for my T1X and my T1Y and the hypotenuse of my triangle is 300 Newtons as shown in the picture. And all I did was took a look at which side of the triangle I wanted. So I wanted the opposite side and I wanted to use the hypotenuse. So I did sine of 40 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse cross multiply the 300 um, up and over to the side, which is basically multiplying both sides by 300. And I got T1Y. And I basically did the same thing for um, the X component using the cosine because I wanted the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So then cosine of 40 degrees equals T1X over 300. Same thing, cross the 300 over and got my X component. Um, I did the same procedure for my 75 degree right triangle. I just took this, slid it right over here. Use the same process. I use sine to find my y component and then cosine for my x component. And then from there, I plugged in all of my values into the two formulas that I created. And from what I see so far, it looks like I'm going to have all the information I need because I wanted um, the tension in rope three, which is FT3. So I see a formula over here where that's the only unknown, which means that I can just do the algebra to find FT3. And then also, it says, what is the mass of the box? And it looks like my unknown variable um, over here is FG, but we know that we can break down FG into MG, which is mass times 9.8. Okay, so it looks like our only unknown variable over there is the mass, which is the other thing I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up with the algebra and then solve for my two solutions. All right, so I finished off the algebra by adding up my T1Y and T2Y, which gave me 386.03, and I set that equal to M times 9.8, so it was minus M times 9.8, so I just added that to both sides, so it slid over to the right side of the equation, and then I divided both sides by 9.8 to get a mass of 39.39 kilograms. In the X direction, um, I added the 229.81, our T1X, to the other side, subtracted 51.76 from both sides, and that left us with an FT3 of 178.05 newtons. So the key to solving um, one of these problems is a couple things. So the very first step, and the most important one by far, is to draw your force diagram, and any angled components are broken up into their X and Y components. Okay, so the actual forces are all of the forces in blue, okay? But we can't use those in the formula because we need to break up our forces into their X and Y components in order to solve for our values. So what we did was we created some components, made some right triangles, did a little bit of trig. You would typically use sine and cosine, not all the time, but pretty often you will, to find the different parts of the triangle. The most important thing is to save your numbers to the very end and don't assume any number is anything particular. So after you create your formulas based on your diagram, you place your numbers in the very end and then um, hopefully you'll have one unknown variable in each formula. If not, you might have to do some subbing or a little bit more solving from there. Um, turns out for this one, we just had to do a little bit of algebra and then we were able to solve for that mass and that force of tension. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand angled forces in equilibrium. Thank you for watching and listening.